Something a little unusual here in the Tetrad shop. We've got a Caterpillar 259D3 that we're gonna do a 500 hour service on. So we're gonna take a look at some of the components we're gonna use and some of the tips and tricks that I use on these cats to try to make it a little more successful and a little more less messy. So no matter what machine I'm working on, I always try to use OEM filters. So thanks to our local dealer here, Wheeler Cat, we got a 500 hour service. And what a 500 hour service according to the manual on this is air filters, fuel filter, engine oil, and engine oil filter. We've got a hydraulic filter or a charge filter, whatever you want to call it. Breather cap, and we've got to do final drive oil. They sent us engine oil, but I did not get any final drive oil, but they do recommend a 75-140 full synthetic, and we're going to use a royal purple today in these final drives. So first things first, let's do an oil change. So first thing we're going to do is use our 13 millimeter on our little impact here and uh, remove our inspection plate. And then you're going to dig out all the dirt and mud that is in between this inspection plate and the oil pan. This one looks clean, but don't believe everything you see on YouTube. It was a mess. So what we're going to do is, using a 7-8 socket, we're going to get up here and uh, take the drain plug off, but I'm gonna get my oil sample bottle ready because we are gonna do an engine oil sample on this one. Again, you can look up in there and find this plug, but it's just straight up through this inspection hole. I went ahead and loosened this one. They are very tight, <laughs> very hard to uh, break these loose for the first time for some reason. You kind of got to get your hand up in there. There's not a really good way not to get your hand all covered in oil. So wear these gloves whenever possible. Okay. I try to get an oil sample midstream, you know, once. I don't want to catch any of that oil kind of dripping off the side of the frame there. Because we're... We want to try to avoid contamination the best we can in these oil samples. Next we've got our oil filter which is tucked back behind here. So. A couple tips here to make this a little easier because it's not in a great location. I know a lot of people complain about it, but it's not too bad if you just do these couple steps. Take this belt cover off, just five little quarter turn screws and it comes right off. A little oil absorbent pad I'm gonna put underneath this filter. That's just in case I spill anything. Because if you know me, I hate making a mess. Um, yeah, remove the positive battery terminal and just move that positive cable up out of the way after you get this belt cover off and that gives us plenty of room to get in here. So not only am I using a little pad underneath, but this is just the bottom of a little one gallon oil jug. I just cut out and I'm just gonna slide it between the battery and the engine here, right up underneath that oil filter so that we can catch, because oil is gonna leak out of that. And we wanna try to catch what we can. Just a little band clamp. You can kind of go right over the back of this oil filter and break it loose. that works. We always want to look at our filter and make sure that the uh, gasket did come off with the filter. Kind of wipe off the face back here. And just a little clean oil around the gasket there. And hard part is getting these things back in there. 
getting that positive cable out of the way enough. Challenging, but so next we're going to do our fuel filter, and right here is our. Uh, water and fuel sensor and it's zip tied here to the harness so we kind of just need to cut that off so that we can uh, pull this filter out of here and get that unplugged okay. using our same little one gallon pan we're going to drain this water out of this or the fuel and water out of this fuel water separator to kind of lower the fuel in the filter head a little bit so that when we pull it off again we're not spilling fuel everywhere and making a mess So on the new filter, one thing I notice is there's an O-ring on the, um, the water bowl here. Usually filters come with a new O-ring. Of course it comes with the new O-rings up top, but not the one here. So just be careful with that O-ring there. Make sure we don't damage it or lose it uh, when we put the new filter on. One thing you notice, we have an electric pump, so we put these filters on dry, and we put them on dry, which means we don't pre-fill them to try to avoid any contamination in the system. So whenever you can avoid pre-filling a fuel filter, uh, definitely do it. So yeah, put on dry and the pump will take care of it. We're going to move on to this hydraulic filter here in this canister and of course just like the fuel filter we've got hydraulic oil up in the head here that's going to leak out so we've got a drain plug down here on the bottom of this filter uh, canister stuff this housing so i'm going to try to using a three-quarter wrench um, this one's an inch and an eighth i think on the housing and three-quarter for the plug so we're just going to pull the plug and drain the fluid out of there so when we take this off again we don't just spill hydraulic oil all inside the engine of the machine. Now that we've got that drain, now we can pull the housing off. And I'm sorry, this is an inch and three sixteenths. I think I said that was an inch and an eighth, but 
I really find that these housings are super tight. Usually get them off with one of these small line wrenches. a tight squeeze I mean I guess I don't see if a better way to get it in and out um, maybe I would have removed this cooling bottle next time but anyways we got it out let's get our new filter put in and again our box did not come with new o-rings for the housing itself uh, of course the filter itself has a new o-ring on the top but to remove this filter, there's some tabs here on the side. See, it'll, it'll spin in that housing all day long. And notice that the way that this is designed, this filter will only go up in the housing one way. So the filter is going to fit in the upper housing. In the bottom housing, we're going to screw that back into uh, the, the housing, I guess, itself. So that, we'll squeeze these tabs here on either side. and that filter will come right out. And these are the two O-rings I'm talking about it didn't come with. Um, I guess I have to order those separately if we wanted to replace them. And, um, I guess it's all right here on the 500 hour service, but on the 1000 hour service, I would make sure I had those O-rings because uh, I wouldn't want to do that more than twice. And we just take our new filter, again, squeeze the tabs, and you'll see the groove that they kind of fit down in and it locks it into place. Now all I've got left on the engine side is the air filters. We'll pop those off real quick and then we got a breather cap in the final drives to do. First, let's not forget to uh, put engine oil in this machine. We're using um, Cat 15W40 on this engine. Um, I mean, it tells us exactly what it wants us to use here, and that's what we're using. I, personally, in our climate, this is a 1540. This is what our dealer gave us. I like to run 1030, um, either a semi-synthetic or a synthetic, because of the cold weather that we get in our area. Um, 1540 for southern climates and all that is just fine, but, and I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be just fine in this engine as well. The 1030 um, or the, even a 0W40 in extremely cold climates helps that engine turn over faster. It gets oil to the turbo quicker. It's just all around better for cold weather service. So we're going to fill this up with three gallons of oil and then we'll move on to our final drives and our breather cap. And again, part of the 500 hour service on this cat is replacing the hydraulic breather cap. And it's, it is important we do this. I mean, normally you wouldn't have an issue, but it's important that our tank vents properly. And um, this is a vented cap. So once it gets clogged up or something may not work properly and it just, it's just best to, as cheap as they are, just go ahead and replace them. But to do that, we have to raise the cab up and then we have to get in up underneath the cab. And I'll show you where this cap is. Right. 
right there up in the corner there. See if we can get this uh, changed out real quick. So on our final drive, I've got this aligned. You know, this is our center hole. This is gonna be our, um, our oil level. And if you've got an upper plug on a final drive or a level plug like this one, always, always, always remove the upper cap first because these are usually pressurized. Now this one seems like it's over full here. See, there was just a little pressure in there. But if this final drive was hot, it would actually have quite a bit of pressure in there. And what happens is you're gonna take off one of these caps and it's gonna blow this nasty gear oil all over you. I promise you, you don't want that. And our cap being magnetic, you know, we can see that there is some metal particulate on there. And that's perfectly normal on these final drives. You'll see that a lot. Now, CAT specifies we do this at 250 hours. Um, just by looking at the paint on the caps, I think that the 250 hour oil change on this final drive was not done. Um, so it does have a good burned gear oil smell to it. <laughs> you know, so uh, good thing we're doing at 500 and, and this should be done at every 500 hours. And then once it's done draining, I'm gonna put the caps back in and we're gonna go around to the other side. And what we have to do is we have to drive this machine. Now we're gonna bring this six o'clock, the hole, the drain hole up to the 12 o'clock. That's gonna be our fill hole. Um, and this is gonna be our level. Why can't you just fill it here at the level plug up to level? Well, the way this is designed, you can't really get a good, you know, get your oil to pour into the final drive. It's just blocked up and you'll spill as much or more than you get in there. So it's best just to roll this up top. I wish they would have put another plug over here on the side. I mean, hell, they could have machined it in pretty easy and we could have just filled it from one of these, but now we have to drive it up to the 12 o'clock and we'll fill it with, um, it, I think they take like right at one quart of the fully synthetic gear oil, the um, 75W140. So I still have a lot of work to do. You can see that the, um, the coolant level is low and that's due to a coolant leak that we have back here on the radiator. So I gotta get the coolant leak fixed, uh, top off the coolant reservoir. Um, and then I've gotta flip the cutting edge, clean the cabin air filters and grease the machine and that should take care of everything. But hopefully those tips and tricks are gonna help you on your Caterpillar to just not make a mess. I mean, it's not a hard service to do, but getting in there and getting stuff in and out is is a little tight on these machines so any questions or comments on that please let me know thanks for watching